So one of my subscribers reached out to me and asked if I would give my own personal take on Elena and Leighton Flowers leaving Calvinism video. So the segment is almost two hours long, so what I'll do is I'll cover and respond to short bits that stick out to me and give my own personal take. So let's go ahead and get into it with the first part. Yeah, it, it sounds there's a lot of similarities in my journey. You know, I was, you know, in my late teens, early twenties, and I'm introduced to MacArthur. MacArthur was the first person I was introduced to as well. Um, and I also had interactions with quote unquote Arminians that actually pushed me into Calvinism because mm -hmm. of their lack of ability to engage the text, at least in my estimation at the time. Mm -hmm. And I still, that's still my estimation, even today, looking back on the things they said, um, the kinds of comments that some of the quote unquote Arminian or non-Calvinistic pastors that I would run into saying things like, you know, uh, well, you know, I. It may, it's two rails that meet in eternity and you just got to accept that both are true or, you know, you know, I, I used to know a Calvinist once and he's selling cars now. You don't want to go down that road. Um, I mean, they're just and then quoting John 316 at me. Well, you, you mm -hmm. know, you, and, and it, as if I hadn't read it before, I <laughs> didn't know it was mm -hmm. there. Um, and it was almost it was almost as if the non Calvinists in my life were more convincing of Calvinism than the actual Calvinist were because of how yes. inept they seem to be in engaging with my questions. And it sounds like that's very similar for you. Yes, I've thought that in listening to your testimony, I've thought, yep, yep, that's how I felt. That's what I saw. I have definitely related to yours as well in those ways. Um, it always, and the quoting John 316, yes, when they would just say, whosoever, louder and louder, it's like, <laughs> Yeah. And no, I no, 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 I'm not listening. Whosoever, yeah. whosoever, no, no, no. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I would yeah, scoff. Like. In, in my spirit, in my heart, I was scoffing. I'm like, oh, please, you know, which is so sad. But that is genuinely how I viewed it. I viewed it as less than and, and just like not, you just don't quite grasp the, the profoundness of what I've been able to grasp, you know. <laughs> and I didn't like go around thinking that way every day. But that kind of heart does affect you. Even so let's deal with what they just talked about here, okay? And before I begin, I'd like to get one thing straight. Calvinism is biblical, okay? Point blank period, it's biblical. If you disagree with that, you are wrong and that's a fact. It's not up for discussion, that's just what it is. You don't have to call yourself a Calvinist, but if you are against the doctrines of grace, you are just wrong. Okay, now that I made myself clear, let's deal with the key points here. Now, the key factor in why people like Layton and Elena have an issue with Calvinism is because they are looking at the doctrine, the five points, and then are measuring them up against the imperatives of Scripture, the things we are commanded to do. And they are coming to the conclusion that it's a total contradiction. But it's not. And this is why it's important to systematically learn the Bible in a non-contradictory format. There are no contradictions in Scripture, just people who are not able to rightly divide truth. Okay? Now let's deal with Leighton's attack of the word whosoever in John 3.16. Now, Calvinist haters, Calvinism haters, like to use the word whosoever against us because they think it points out inconsistencies. But it doesn't. Let me explain why it doesn't. When we look at the verse John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes shall not perish but have everlasting life. It is whosoever believes that shall be saved. The problem is, and, it, and you gotta pay attention to this, who can believe? Who in their own strength can save themselves? And that there is a problem that all free willing Armenians have. And every time I've come to the, I've had this discussion by email with Calvinist haters, the conversation always seems to stop when we get to this part. They just stop responding. It never fails. Because it exposes their own fallacy and it points the finger right back at God's sovereignty. Okay, so when we're dealing with people like Leighton Flowers and Elena, we're dealing with people who are attempting to r rationalize truth the things that they see in scripture and really what happens is they don't like what they see okay and, and people who are against calvinism are, are in a lot of ways like atheists okay they're people who are suppressing the truth see these people know that calvinism is biblical the problem is they hate it they don't like it so it's not this idea that it's wrong it's just they don't like it and that's why people like Leighton flowers do nothing but attack the doctrines of calvinism okay they, they, that's all they do I mean, I, you can not hardly even call his channel a Christian channel because he's not really he, he's not really seeking to teach anyone. He's just seeking to fight and, and disprove and suppress the truth that he knows. That's all they want to do. OK, and it's because they know that it's true. OK, so again, like I said, I want to go through this whole 
uh, segment and kind of just break down where where they're wrong at because the whole thing is wrong and uh, you have a lot of people in this world who just do not have eyes to see they just they can't see it okay and um, not everyone is, is is of us okay and just like they went out from Calvinism a lot of these people if you continue to watch them they'll continue to go out and they may eventually leave the faith altogether so stick with me with this and let's just continue to break this down